What's up guys? Welcome to another tutorial on Linux. In this tutorial I am going to be teaching you one of the two pillars that support Linux. The file system. Linux looks everything as a file. If you are not organized properly, you will find it difficult to locate them. Proper file organization requires a directory based storage system. Linux also organizes its own files in directories and expects you to do that as well. In Linux, file can be divided into three categories. Ordinary file, directory file, and device file. The ordinary file also know as regular file, and will contain only data as a stream of characters. Whereas in directory file, it will contain name of the files, which are inside that directory, and its associated inode numbers. You can get the inode number of a file, by typing ls command with i as the argument. The inode number is nothing but a unique identification number for the file or directory. All devices are represented by files. To read or write a device, you have to perform these operations on its associated files. Device files are generally found inside the dev directory. File name can consist up to 255 characters, though this figure is normally never reached. File may or may not have extensions and can consist of practically any ASCII characters, except the slash and null character. When you log on to the system, you will be automatically placed in a directory called home directory. The shell variable home knows your home directory. You can see that using the echo command. For knowing your current working directory, you can use pwd command. You can move around in a file system by using the cd command. CD without path name reverts to the home directory. CD commands can sometimes fail if there is no such directory or if you don't have the permission to access the directory. For creating a new directory, you can use mkdir command. The command should be followed by the name of the directory to be created. For example, you can create a folder with name new folder using this command. You can also create a number of subdirectories with one make dir command. Here the argument p, make parent directories as needed, if doesn't exist, and v4, printing a message for each created directory. For removing directory, you can use rmdir command. You can't delete a directory with this command, unless it is empty. Here argument p, removes directory, and its ancestors, whereas v for printing a message, for each directory removal. You can use the ls command for listing the directory contents. The ls command will display the files in ASCII collating sequence. ls has large number of options. You can see more about a command using the help argument. What you are see here is a complete list of optional arguments of ls command. Let's try some of them. ls with argument 1, list one file per line. ls with argument a, will display all files including hidden files as well. Here the single dot represents current directory and double dot represents the parent directory. Okay. As far as, we have learned some of the basic commands set for handling files and directories. Now, let's have a look at the file structure of Linux. Let's change the working directory to root. Here the bin and the user slash bin directory contains all the commonly used Linux commands, which are binary files. Sbin and user sbin contains commands that cannot be executed by the normal user. That's for root user. ETC directory contains the configuration files of the system. You can change a very important aspect of system functioning by editing a text file in this directory. The dev directory contains all device files. Lib and user lib contain all library files in binary form. You will require to link your C programs with files in these directories. The user slash include contains the standard header files used by C programs. The statement hash, stdio.h, used in most C programs, refers to the file stdio.h in this directory. Temp directory where users are allowed to create temporary files. These files are wiped away regularly by the system. var, the variable part of the system, contains all your print jobs and outgoing and incoming mails. And lastly, home directory where users are housed. All right, that's gonna do it for file system. We can dig more about the Linux commands in the upcoming videos. 
If you enjoyed my video or learned anything, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.